Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith and today I'm going to be unboxing the Eldritch Horror expansion called the Mass of Narlathotep. Now that is a word that I have tried to pronounce multiple times and I think that I nailed it. I think it took me probably 10 takes to even get close to that. So we're going to take this one and run with it before I butcher it any further. So we're going to go ahead now, flip this box over to the opposite side, take a look at what this expansion entails and then we're going to dive inside Inside the components. The god of a thousand forms, seemingly unrelated cults once quiet, have set into motion a plan that spells doom for humanity. All across the globe they work with a singular purpose to open the great gate and bring about the ruin of mankind. What malign force could have united these desperate organizations? More importantly, can they be stopped? Mass of Narlathotep introduces investigators specific personal stories, the focus and gather resource actions, plus a host of additional assets, spells, and artifacts to Eldritch Horror. This expansion arms the investigators with everything they need to challenge its two new ancient ones, as well as the all new campaign mode, the Lord of Kadath wakes. There are three highlights on this box I want to make mention of. First off, we can relive the classic Call of Cthulhu role-playing campaign in this box. We can also turn back the Tide of Darkness in campaign mode and down here explore the backgrounds and motivation of each of the Eldritch Horror's 55 investigators. So essentially it allows you to play through kind of a personal story with each of those investigators on their backstory, which is pretty awesome. So when you first open up the box, you're going to find an actual advertising for the Call of Cthulhu tabletop campaign, the role-playing game, if I'm understanding correctly. So if you flip this thing over to the opposite side, yes, indeed, more of that with QR codes attached. You can scan those if interested in the role-playing side of things. Next up, we have the rule book for Eldritch Horror. Again, most expansion rule books are quite thin because they're only introducing a handful of new things to a game, which already has so, so much. So over here on this far left-hand side, you got the Charred Man, a nice backstory on what's going on there, expansion overview, and then how to use this expansion, like how to merge these new cards that come in the expansion into your base game or the other games you're planning on mixing together. You got a components list here, mentioning all the new components inside the game, Mythos cards, Prelude cards, Round Overview cards, Monster tokens, a bunch of different extra cards that are smaller, some tokens here along the bottom, all that good stuff. Moving on to the next page here, we start talking about specifics involving those components for this expansion, like prelude cards, adventures, mystic rune encounters are all covered here. Going over to the next page, we've got focus actions and gather resource actions. Unique assets, additional rules, generically a number of those. And then we head over to optional rules. So adjusting the game difficulty, if you wanted to adjust it, if you're crazy enough to take on Eldritch Horror to higher insane difficulty, you can go ahead and do that. Controlling your fate, your personal stories. This is something I'm quite interested in is how these personal missions, the rewards and consequences merge into the original Eldritch experience that I'm very familiar with. So this is kind of a neat and interesting way to kind of learn a bit more about the characters that you actually use throughout your journeys in the past. And then you've got the campaign mode here which is its own page for the setup the ancient ones I'm guessing that you have to maybe take down an order you've got subsequent game rules between each of the games you're going to tie together because if it's a campaign game you're going to carry forward and then lastly you've got frequently asked questions and your credit so all in all about eight pages so it won't take you long to get through this rule book right after the rule book is out of the way you're going to find a token sheet which is going to have all the new monsters tokens gates and resource based tokens especially for the investigators as well all included here on one sheet for this particular expansion at least flipping this over to the opposite side you can see the back side of these new tokens so you've got one here for different locations for the gates here and Again, most of the investigators are duplicated on the other side. The monsters have specifics about their uh, attributes shown on the back as well, which you will see, and it's probably not worth spoiling during this, but I'll do a quick, because it's not too much of a spoiler, just a quick view here for those that want to see the monsters up top. 
Moving on past that, you're going to get into the bulk of what most Eldridge Horror expansions come with, and that's just a whole bunch more cards to add into your game. You're also going to find standees. You can always expect to find these whenever there's more investigators added into the game. So there's seven new ones, so there should be seven in this bag. And speaking of investigators, we might as well go through those seven plus the Elder ones at the back of this. So we got Agatha Crane here. You can see her special action as well as her attributes here. And if we flip her over to the opposite side, you can get a quick glance at some of the starting items that she begins with, as well as her starting location up top here on the map, plus some things that happen based on whether she's taken out through health or sanity in the game. Calvin Wright is next up in his attributes as well. Again, you'll notice most of this stuff changes quite drastically and always that ability is very, very different. This is what Calvin Wright is gonna start with at the beginning of his endeavor and where he's located to begin. We've got Carson, so he's next up with his action. Again, varying attributes. Flipping over to the opposite side, his starting weapons or equipment, and then again, his information for setup. Another investigator to the pile. This one has a very, very weak observation. You can see, so again, you're, when you're building your team out in Eldritch Horde, you're gonna be doing a lot of trying to balance uh, what are weaknesses and strengths in your different characters. That's a very much as a part of winning uh, as just trying to get through the game itself and survive. You gotta to try to find individuals that, that, that really um, complement each other or at least make up for the weaknesses in each other. So Father Mateo here is another one. Again, another individual who's weak in uh, observation. Flipping this over to the opposite side. This is Father Mateo's back for his setup. We got Preston here who's not so hot on the will category or even lore for instance or observation. He's got a couple really weak ones but very strong in health, very very strong in influence. So an individual that's very likely to be picking up lots of items and buying lots of stuff. So that's always a plus. And then what he starts with as well where he begins. And we have Safina. And this, and now again, there are a number of characters that were introduced, I believe, in Eldritch Horror that are brand new to the series of Arkham Files for Investigators. This might be one of them. I don't believe I've recognized her from previous centuries. I could be totally wrong, but I, she might be a brand new character. So if anyone knows that off the top of their head, they can let me know uh, if I'm wrong on that account, but I don't recognize her name whatsoever. So I believe she's a new entry. And then of course we have the two new Elder Ones. Now I'm not gonna flip these over to the other side because that's their kind of revealed side and, and that kind of spoils a bunch of stuff, but this is just their straight up setup side so there's nothing wrong about showing this here uh, in terms of their deck setup and the, what the cultists will be doing and everything else so here's one elder one starting in the 12th position the other one's 13 and the beginning setup for that one so really excited to go after these two other ones as i've been going through the one after the other so this first deck of cards i'm going to go through i'm actually going to rip through these extremely fast because these are all narrative based and in my opinion they contain a lot of spoilers in terms of what you're going to see uh, through these additions into eldritch horror so they're not spoilers in the sense that it's going to ruin the game for you but these are going to be events and things that you're going to want to run into on your own and there's a whole bunch of them they're going to be adding if if you're familiar with Eldritch Horror, they're going to be adding into the decks of which you already have many of these types of cards to give you more and more options, right? For each colored area uh, within Eldritch Horror of the game board world, you're going to have more and more events that you can go through. And this really helps with the replayability of the game because that's what Eldritch is known for is the ability to replay it. So you've got all kinds of different things. So you pull a card and depending on whether you're in either a city, wilderness or sea location, you'll do that thing and read it out, do the check. That type of thing so there's so many of these there's no point in going through them one by one it's a very large deck of cards but that's always nice to really enhance uh, the gameplay that you already have so I've gone ahead and opened up the second deck and just so you guys know I've taken about one third of the deck away because some of that stuff I want to show you whereas this stuff here is more of the same from the last clip in terms of more narrative based cards that you'll be reading through depending on which encounters you're hitting and you'll be doing things based on pass and fail in order to see what happens in the game so a lot of this I don't want to spoil or show you. Plus, there's some major spoilers right here with this set of cards because these ones are specific to the actual Elder ones that you'll be going up against. This is what makes the game really, really fun is the fact that you never know what objectives you need to do in order to beat these Elder ones, so I do not want to show you any of those. Uh, these ones right here I can spoil a little bit more so because they're the adventure cards. These are quite interesting. They were introduced earlier on in Eldritch Horror, but essentially you can go on these side adventures that will take you through 
cards that are Roman numeral marked and you know they might end up with something that's really really powerful like a trinket that you can use to try to help you take down the elder one and they always have this kind of Indiana Jones-ish style uh, you know look to them on the other side so I really like these cards it's kind of a cool little thing to add into the game it's just to add a little bit more flavor a little more adventure on the side almost like a side quest Next up, you're gonna run into some reference cards and there's always a bunch of these because there's one for every player in the game. So you can have up to eight people playing. So these encounter reference cards with the actions on the back, you've got a whole bunch of those. And then you actually get into some prelude cards, which are really cool. Another thing that was introduced earlier on with Eldritch Horror, but basically these cards are cards that you'd pull one and it would change the beginning of the game uh, and it actually changed maybe something on the game board itself or introduce something that's kind of a detriment, maybe a bonus. Uh, but essentially it just kind of adds a little bit extra to the beginning of the game kind of changing things up and really bumping up that replayability and now we get into the mini cards that come inside the game I always love showing these off because the artwork is fantastic plus most of them are items and things that you just add into decks that you can potentially pick up so here's a couple things like a black book for instance a black fan got a map so there's all kinds of really, really cool things to add into the game, which are gonna bolster those decks. You got some items here, of course. Items are always good, because you can go pick them up. Nice, you get a chainsaw now. Got some jewelry here you can pick up, blades. All kinds of stuff to help you fight off the insane amount of monsters in the game. Again, the actual artwork on all the cards are always very, very nice, so I like staring at them for long periods of time. Next up here we have Conditions, so Corruption appears to be a new one, if I am not mistaken, that's what I'm not familiar with, so Corruption, and I'll give you a chance to actually take a look at what it looks like down below. So a bunch of those added in, we got Living Link, here's a Boon, that was a Bane of course, the Corruption one, this is a Boon, the Living Link, so there should be a number of these. Headstrong is another one, it's a Talent, very interesting. Uh, meditation. Talent, uh, Perceptive, Practice, so again, some of these things are going to be ones that we've already seen in Eldritch Horror before, Resilient, Silver Tongued, and this is where we get to these like story-based cards, mini cards for each of the investigators in the game, so for instance, Agatha Crane here, here here's her major card, flip it over, we got a little bit of text here for her which is pretty interesting. Then we move down to this card here, which is the reward. So maybe when you actually finish out her story, this is kind of what you gain from that by doing it. So you got a couple things with her, which is pretty cool. So that's really interesting because it, it might add another element to playing the investigators beyond what is expected. But of course, there's going to be these for every single character in the game. So there's going to be a whole bunch. So this is a kind of an expansion that you don't really want to pick up. This would be the one you highly do not, and rec I don't recommend you pick up at all, ever, until you've got all the other content because this is gonna really add into what you already have if you own everything. If you don't own everything, picking this thing up right away would be quite a big waste, I think, as you wouldn't be able to use most of the new features with this expansion. So, uh, of course, you wouldn't also be able to do the wonderful campaign modes and all that kind of stuff because you wouldn't have a number of investigators to make it worthwhile in the first place. So that, you know, from, from that standpoint, most people don't jump to the very back of the expansion line to uh, go after the first expansion that they purchase. But uh, just a word of advice, don't do it with this one. It's probably not worth it. But if you're like me and you're picking up all the expansions, then you're going to want to go ahead and grab this one. And here is the last pile of mini cards inside the game. We're still going through all of the investigators and their story cards and their bonuses they get from that. So again, those are pretty cool. The rewards is what they call them. So hopefully you're able to see them quite quickly. You can pause the screen if you want to read any of them. But I think having a reward or an extra ability that these characters can do when trying to go up against all of these Elder Gods is always a good thing. So we got all kinds. There's Roland as well. Remember him from one of the star characters from uh, Arkham Horror LCG at the very beginning. Skids O'Toole. So many. 55 investigators is an insane amount. Like, that's a lot of people inside this Arkham Files world. And the final cards, we start off with these spells, Call of the Storm. So there's a number of those. Of course, they uh, vary when you flip them over and use them. Got some unique assets here. Some allies to add into the fray. 
Some items as well, magical items. I have darkness, that's pretty cool. Stone tablet, those are nice. Tablet shards. Curse tablet, doesn't sound good. Lost treasure, that sounds really good. Uh, stone calendar. Wooden puppet. Ancient scroll. Perplexing idol. Icon. Push it to the limit. Tasks, so we got some tasks here at the end. Sacrifices to make. Tempted by darkness. And that's going to conclude the unboxing for this Eldritch Horror expansion. I really hope this helps you make an informed decision on this particular expansion in the Eldritch Horror series. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, keep on rolling solo!